let us solve this progressive exponential equation for all the values of x. Now to start off, we're going to bring the value negative 1 from the right hand side to the left hand side. And to do that, we're going to subtract uh, or add 1 to both sides. So this expression will now become x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus x. And that will give us plus 1. And the right hand side will be equal to 0. So to continue with this, I'm going to uh, group this, group this, and then group this expression. So if I group that expression, that expression uh, x to the power of 4 is common here, right? So I'm going to bring out x to the power of 4, and we'll have, we left with x plus 1, right? Over here, plus x to the power of 2 is common. So I'm going to bring out x to the power of 2, and we'll be left with x plus 1, right? Plus uh, x plus 1, and this will be equal to 0. So from this expression, you see that x plus 1 is common. So I'm going to bring out x plus 1. So all this expression divided by x plus 1 will give us x to the power of 4 plus all this expression divided by x plus 1 will give us x squared plus all this expression divided by x plus 1 will give us 1 and all this will be equal to 0. Now to simplify this expression, I want to introduce, I want to introduce a simple expression. This one, I can simply say that uh, my positive x square minus x square can be equal to zero, right? So if I introduce this into this expression with my one still remaining, I've not removed anything and I've not added anything. So that expression will now give me x plus one and this will give me, this expression will now become x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 2 plus 1 plus x squared minus x squared. And all this will be equal to 0. I did not change anything because plus x squared minus x squared is still equal to 0. So this expression, if I collect like terms, that expression will now give me x plus 1, right? And this will give me what? x to the power of 4, right? Uh, this will give me plus 2x squared, right? And that will give me plus 1 minus x square and all this will be equal to zero good so recall that i can have my four to be equal to two multiplied by two so that expression will now give me x plus one and this will give me what x square multiplied by two right plus 2x squared, right, plus 1, minus x squared, and this will be equal to 0. Now, I can simplify this expression comfortably. As I simplify this expression, I want you to recall something. Look at this expression very well. Uh, this expression if I expand it or I contrast it, it's similar to this expression. If I have a plus b all squared, this can be equal to a squared, right? From this algebraic expression, plus 2ab plus b squared, right? 
So if you look at that expression, you find out that a is equal to x squared, right? And then uh, b is equal to 1 there, not 2, right? If you look at it very well, because it's just 1, which is this. So our b is 1, because 1 square, 1 square is equal to 1. So our b is 1. So that means that expression can be reduced further. I can reduce that whole expression I have here to become x plus 1, right? And that whole expression can simply give me x square, which is a plus 1, all squared, right? That is representing this. And this would be what? Minus x what? Square. And all this would be equal to 0. Now, if you look at this expression very well, you see that I also have what we call a difference of 2 square here. Right? And from that expression, if you recall that a square minus b square will be equal to a plus b, and we'll have our a minus b. So that expression can simply give me, uh, from that expression, I can simply say my a is equal to x square plus 1, and my b is equal to x what is equal to x right and that is exactly what we have here so if we implant that into that expression we're now going to have our x plus one and this other expression will give us a which is what x square plus uh one right then plus x, which is this, and this will be multiplied by x squared plus 1 minus x, which is this. So we've expanded that, and that whole thing will still be equal to 0. Now we have segmented this expression in such a way that we have three different equations, the zero product rule. So from the first expression, you are going to see from the first case that x plus one is equal to zero. So if we subtract one from both sides, we take the first solution, x one to be equal to negative one. That is the first solution to this uh, mathematic expression. Now, in the second case, we have the value of uh, x plus x plus 1, x squared plus x squared plus x plus what? Plus 1, and this will be equal to 0. Once I rearrange that, I'm going to have this. So if I rearrange that, I'm going to have this. So we are going to find the value of uh, x here and we are going to find the value of uh, x here and we are going to find the value of x remembering this that a x square plus b x plus c is a quadratic equation that is a replica of that and from that expression our a is equal to 1 our b is equal to 1 and our c is equal to 1. So we are going to use the quadratic formula. If we use the quadratic formula, the value of our x will be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So if we simplify that, inserting all those variables into that expression, we'll have our x to be equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b square is going to be 1 square, right? Minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 and all this will be multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1.
So given that expression, we're going to have the value of our x to be equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 square is 1 minus 4 and this will be divided by 2. This expression will give us negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 divided by what? By 2. So from that expression, you come to see that our x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus. Uh, this will give us the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of negative 1 and all these will be divided by 2. So if we simplify this, you see that the value of our x will be equal to uh, minus 1 plus or minus. This is what? Root 3 imaginary because uh, the square root of negative 1 is equal to imaginary and this is divided by 2. So the values of our x are going to have uh, the value of our x2 to be equal to, that will give us negative 1 plus root 3 divided by 2 imaginary. And this will be divided by what? 2. Because the 2 is for those two expressions. And then we'll have our x3 to be equal to negative 1 divided by 2 minus the square root of 3 imaginary divided by 2. Great. Now we're going to take the third uh, quadratic expression from that solution and that is x squared plus 1 minus x. Remember we are looking for all the values of what? x. So from that expression we have x squared, x squared uh, minus is going to give us now plus uh, minus x, right? Look at that expression. The first one we use the positive and positive, and this time around we're using minus x plus 1. So that will give us minus x plus 1, and this is equal to 0. So we're going to use the same quadratic formula. If we use the same quadratic formula, the value of our x will be equal to, uh, that will give us minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2 words to a. So what's the value of our x here? Remember that uh, a is equal to 1, our uh, b is equal to negative 1, and our c is equal to 1. So the value of our x will be equal to negative what? That will give us negative multiplied by negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 square minus 4 multiply by 1, multiply by 1, and all this is divided by 2, multiply by 1. So that expression is going to give us our x to be equal to, this will be 1 plus or minus the square root of, minus 1 square is going to give us 1, minus 4 times 1 times 1 is going to give us negative 4, divided by so this is going to give us the value of 1 plus or minus square root of negative 3 divided by 2. So that expression is going to give us the value of our x to be equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 3 imaginary divided by 2. Now the last x we we'll have is x3. Right, so we're going to have x4 and what and x5. So this expression will now give us the value of our x4 to be equal to 1 plus 
square root of 3 imaginary, this will be divided by 2, and this will be divided by 2. And the value of uh, x to the power of 5, x5, is equal to, this will give us 1 divided by 2 minus square root of 3 imaginary divided by 2. So from this uh, as, uh, from this mass question, we are asked to find all the values of x. So the values of x is x1 is equal to negative 1, x2 is equal to an imaginary, which is negative half plus root 3 divided by 2 imaginary, Why the other one is the negativity of that one, Why we have the positive side, which is uh, x4 half plus root 3 uh, divided by 2 imaginary and half minus root 3 divided by 2 imaginary. Now let's check if truly these are solutions are correct. We're going to plot a Cartesian graph of this whole expression. We plot a Cartesian graph of all this whole expression where we have this part to become our, this is our imaginary and this is a real value, a real aspect, a real uh, line. From here, we're going to assume this to become one. We're going to assume this point to be one. And we're going to assume this point to be one. Why this point to be one? Now, the, this is what? Half. While this point is half. Remember, this is the negative aspect of this side. Why this remains the positive, this is negative what? One. And we have this to become negative half. And this aspect is going to give us what? Negative what? Half. So we are going to draw this on the Cartesian plane. The first one, the value of x is what? Negative 1. So we'll find the value of x. That means the value of x is at this point. This is where the value of x is at this point. That is x what? 1. So the value of x2 from the solution x2 is a uh, negative half plus the imaginary is root 3 divided by 2. So we have negative half as the imaginary, negative half as the real side, which is this side. When we cut it off, now when we cut this off, we are going to have the imaginary to be greater than half, which is here, root 3 words, as root 3 over 2, and is going to be a positive root 3 over 2, right? Root 3 divided by 2, right? Positive. So that means this part is going to be the x what? This part is going to be our x2. Now, from our x3, we can see that we have the imaginary part, which is negative, and the real part, which is also negative. So, the real part is equal to half. The real part is this part, which is half, a negative half, right? Which is this part. And the imaginary is also a negative half, which is what? Which is going to be this point. So, the neg negative half, we have this to become negative half. That's negative half. This is the negative half. And then we have the imaginary to also be negative what? Half. So that aspect is going to give us what? Uh, X what? Three. So the next one we're going to look for, we're going to look for uh, the value of we're going to look for the value of x4. And what is the value of x4? The value of x4 is positive half and positive imaginary. The positive half, which is the positive side of the real side, is this. Well, we'll have this goes this way. Why the positive imaginary is going to come up this way. 
and this becomes what? This becomes positive imaginary is over here, and this becomes what? This becomes our uh, x what? Our uh, x4, right? So we look at the positive imaginary, which is over here, right? And we have the positive uh, half, which is here. And this is what? This is going to be our uh, x what? 4. So if we have that, we are going to still have the value of our x5. From that expression, you can see that our uh, x5 is, the real part is uh, positive and the imaginary part is negative. So the real part is positive, half, we we'll have the real part to be positive half, which is this point, and we we'll have the imaginary to be negative uh, root 3, over 2 which is this point so if we draw this point we're going to get it to this real part which is what x5 so if we draw all these to meet up a line to meet up all these you find out that this is what this is this line forms a circle which tells us that our solution is absolutely what absolutely right so that tells us that the values of x the solution of x given to us in that expression are all validly what correct i know you did enjoy watching this math solution don't forget to give it a thumbs up share it with friends and colleagues and remember to subscribe to my channel for more simplified mathematics solutions thanks so much for watching and Bye-bye for now.